chance we've had to speak to you since the passing of the Queen last week and for someone who picked up an MBE from her at the palace. I know you took your daughter down there last summer as well. Just wondered if you'd like to pay tribute. Yeah, well, listen, from a personal point of view and also from my family's point of view, we've always been fascinated with the, the royal family and, and watched an awful lot over the years. Um, obviously, my mum and dad and the same. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would like to pay my respects. And also, we've, we're obviously lucky here at Villa to have regular visits from, from William. Um, I've been lucky enough to meet Harry over the years due to England commitments. And, um, yeah... We, we obviously would like to pay our respects from a, from a club point of view and um, we'll show that tomorrow night. Um, Pre-game, I'm sure the fans will back that up during the game and um, hopefully we can give a performance um, for the boys to be proud of. It was obviously an understandable reason for the games to be called off last weekend. Is there a sense from you that you might have lost a little bit of momentum after such a good performance against Manchester City? You'd have loved a game to try and, and build on that. Yeah, we, we would have, of course, from a football perspective, but I think, you know, in life some things are, are bigger than football. And um, I think the world was all in agreement that um, football should stop um, and pay its respect, and that's what we did. Um, but yeah, from a total selfish football point of view, um, in my shoes, we, we were on the end of a real positive performance against Manchester City, a good, strong team performance. And of course, you want to back that up as soon as you can. Um, but as I say, there's some things in life that are bigger than football. One question that we're asking all Premier League managers ahead of this weekend. You might have seen the ideas from the new Chelsea owner about a north-south all-star game. Just wondering yeah. what you made of the, of the comments. I'm not sure if Villa would be north or south. And guess well, look, I see, uh, I see Jürgen trying to put cold water on it. And um, I'd quite like to watch it. Yeah. Uh, I would have liked to have played in one. Uh, no, nah, I'm only joking. Listen, I think the calendar is, is busy enough. I think we've all got enough to focus on. Um, it's a nice uh, outside-the-box idea. Um, it's a nice thought. Um, but for me, I think we've got enough to focus on. Who'd have the better line at North or South? Yeah, at the moment, ooh, Man City, I'll probably go North. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Stephen, you OK? Yeah, very good. Can we get, uh, firstly, the team news ahead of uh, Southampton, please? Yes, we, um, we've got a few issues that we need to make late calls on. Ollie Watkins um, has been a little bit unwell at the beginning of the week. Um, we'll make a late call on Ollie. Um, Emmy Martinez missed training today. Um, we also had Robin Olsen out of training today. That doesn't mean that they won't be available tomorrow, but again, we'll have to make sensible decisions on both. Um, obviously, Jan's not available because Southampton are his parent club. Uh, outside of that, um, everyone's good to go. In terms of Southampton, they had a, a sticky start and then rather slowly but surely turning that around. And he's had a, a similar job to yourself when you came in, kind of rebuilt that squad and had to reshape it. What have you made of what he's done down there? Yeah, I've been impressed with his work. I like the way he's really positive, how he goes about it. Obviously, a pressing team. I think they've changed slightly. They've gone a little bit more direct this season, but um, he likes to give youngsters a chance. Um, High-energy football. And, um, you know, during his tenure, they've had some really impressive results. At the same time, they've, they've faced some, some issues like us, ourselves. And, um, you know, when you're building these projects, they take time and um, they take a lot of hard work and effort. And I'm sure... Um, Jordan is tenured, he's experienced what I've experienced in my short time here at Villa. And has Jan given you any sort of inside pointers ahead of this one? Loads. Um, if you know Jan, he's an extrovert, he likes to talk, he likes to communicate, he's a really positive um, influence around the group, but that doesn't give you any guarantees in this game, I wish it did. Um, and I'm sure Ralph um, and his coaching staff know that Jan will be giving us inside information. Um, I don't think it makes sense to come in and, and be total, totally quiet. Thank you, Stephen. Best of luck. <clears throat> Stephen, you talked about Jan there and the positive energy. When you brought him to the club, that's what you were wanting and wanting to rub off with the other players that you have here. So with this extended training time that mm. you've had and um, with the situation that we're in right now, have you noticed that, that positive energy bouncing off the roof and maybe even more yeah. so after that performance? Yeah, I think obviously the performance was the most important thing. We, we wanted to get ourselves in a better place. We needed our big players to get closer to their top form. I think we've seen that over the 90 minutes. 
and we managed to get two positive uh, signings in late on. Um, two big profiles, two experienced players that we spoke about before. They've brought competition and energy uh, to the group. Leander's pushing uh, for a starting place in the team, which should um, make the current midfielders um, aware of that. And um, Jan will be available after international break. And what I've seen so far of both players is they're pushing to play. They're not here to make the numbers up, and that's what I want to see. So I've been really impressed with both. And we, we've seen the team go on and then beat run, get a little run together before dropping off at the back end towards last season. Um, how much of a turning point was that performance against Manchester City, or can mm. that be now going forward into this run of games that you have? Yeah, we want to make it uh, a turning point, but you know, just because you've performed well against a high-quality opponent, it gives you no guarantees. You've got to go and put it back in, in the training ground, reset yourself, and then go and back that performance up. Um, what we showed against City is at our best, and when we have our top players close to their best form, um, we can compete against anyone in the league. Um, what we need to do now is back that up, but it doesn't guarantee that you've turned the corner one performance, unfortunately. Um, so the onus is on us, the responsibility is on me to prepare the team to put in a good performance tomorrow against a different opponent. Just one more on Her Majesty, if I could. I know also <coughs> you had the NBA and all those sort of um, invitations. Have you ever had an audience with her, though, away from all of that? No, and um, I've never had uh, an invitation, but that's, that's no issue. Um, at all. I was really honoured to receive the MBE in 2006. Um, she was there, obviously, to, to give me it, which I was really, it was a really proud day for me and my family. It's a moment I'll ch cherish per personally for the rest of my life. And um, I'm one of a lucky few that has, you know, been in a company and she was very nice, very respectful. And um, that's a moment I'll, I'll carry with me for a long time. Um, and, you know, I'm looking forward to paying my own personal respects tomorrow. You're welcome. Cheers, Stephen. Hi. Good to oh. speak to you again. Um, <clears throat> managers often say to us that the game is mainly between your ears. So what has that fantastic performance against Manchester City done for your players' confidence? It should have done an awful lot uh, for confidence and belief. Um, I think we've shown on the day that we're, we're capable of performing as a team. Uh, we're, we're, we're capable of carrying out a game plan against the best. Um, and yeah, you know, that was during a, a real tough period. So it showed that the players have got a lot of guts, a lot of character and a lot of togetherness. And that's what we're going to need to move forward to, to turn our form around. Uh, we're not out the woods at all. We're, we're on the back of one positive performance, one positive result. The challenge now is can we go and back that up? I believe we can. We've got the players to do it. Um, we've got enough available to do that. So. You know, we need to go and act and, and make sure we carry it out. Do you have to talk to them about, look, that's the bar you've set yourselves, that's the minimum you expect? No, because they know. Um, they know we, you know, we, we, we live together, we, we talk, we analyse, we debrief the good, the bad. We, we talk individually, we talk collectively. They talk amongst themselves. They know when they're good, they're an honest group, and they know when they've let themselves down. Um, so, yeah, I want them to go and really back that Manchester City results up. Um, be a different type of performance needed. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can turn that positive draw into a good, strong home win. And I'm sure our fans are looking forward to seeing us play. There's going to be a lot of emotion before this game. Rightly so, an opportunity for everyone to pay their respects. But once it's done, um, we want to go and put in a real strong home performance for our fans because they've stayed with us and the atmosphere against City was, was top, top draw. If we can get that again, it'll be a huge help for us. Finally, what do you expect on the pitch from Southampton? Well, I think the fuller energy. Um, I think they've recruited really well. He's, he, he seems to be recruiting younger players uh, that can get about the pitch, um, that are full of energy, full of no fear. Um, I work with one of them, Joe Aribo, up at Rangers. Uh, I know what he's very much uh, capable of. So yeah, they're a dynamic team, they're young, they're athletic, and they're capable of pressing, they're good in transition. They've gone a little bit more direct and they're showing that they're up for the fight. So the challenge is there for us. It's an exciting one and um, for us, it's very much game on. Good luck. Good Thank luck. you. Thank you.
Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, good you. Yeah, good, thank you. So, could you just elaborate a bit more on Emmy, what the issue is with it? It just hasn't been feeling too good overnight. I don't think it's a big issue. Um, so we, we've had him in, we've had him in front of the doctor and, and gave him some medicine to hopefully make him feel better in the coming hours. I've got no doubt he'll pull through. I think he'll be available, but um, obviously want to be respectful and make you guys aware, just in case you think I'm a liar, come tomorrow night. <laughs> We've never seen that stuff. Uh, you touched on it a few moments ago, obviously about the fact that it's been an enforced couple of weeks of football, but having had the games coming thick and fast, have there been benefits as well for you and your staff and the group to actually have a couple of weeks on the training ground, be able to just work on a few more things and reset a little bit? Yeah, listen, I think in, in situations like that, what I mentioned, the bigger than football, you have to accept um, the decisions, and I think the decisions were right. Um, so we, we've tried to use the time the best we can, a lot of training time, a lot of rehearsing on how we want it to look in and out of possession. Um, and yeah, we believe we've prepared in the best way, so uh, there's certainly going to be no excuses come tomorrow night. And do you think, you know, especially after the windows close now, are you, is your squad now, is your team beginning to develop the identity that you want it to have? Well, I think we can certainly feel more settled. I think whilst the window's open and the season's starting, um, there's a lot of noise um, externally, internally, about who's going, who's staying, and it's, it's, it's difficult to get uh, into your rhythm, if you like, in terms of who's going to be here, who's not. Up until the last hours, you know, we could have been without Douglas Louise, now he's here, things have changed, but with the window being shut, it gives you the chance to settle. You know who you're going with from now um, to the World Cup. Um, and to the next window opening, so hopefully now we can find our rhythm. We're on the back of a, a strong performance, a positive result, and we want to go and back that up now.